I want to talk this morning about building your life. Did you know that God wants to give you a life? You say, Pastor, I, I got a life. I'm with you. But God wants to fulfill the things in your life that you desire. You know, the enemy is working overtime against the church. Who's the church? It's you. Did you know that the people of God are the church? Ever since the beginning, God called out a group of people known as the Israelites, the Jewish people. He made them his own. They lived, went left and right, and he was always struggling with trying to get them to serve him, to follow him. Through Jesus, uh, uh, Paul going to the Gentiles, God says, I'm opening up it up to everybody. Everyone's going to have a seat at my table. The call goes to anyone who shall respond to my love. That's you here today. You're a child of God. I know at times you may not feel it. I know at times you may wonder, is it working? What's in it for me? But you're here and God wants to speak to you. God wants to encourage you this morning to let you know he has a plan for your life. He's not done working in your life. You may have some ups, some downs. There may be some things that come against you, but God wants to build your life. I was reading in the book of Proverbs. Usually don't uh, go to the book of Proverbs, especially on a Sunday morning. When I was a Teen Challenge director, every uh, morning we'd have devotions with the guys around the table. And we would go with the day of, the, the day of that week. We would uh, read that Proverbs and talk about it. But I want to look at Proverbs chapter 24, a few verses. What is Proverbs? Proverbs is nothing more than uh, uh, Solomon, David's son, uh, giving thoughts, uh, phrases of wisdom, ideas, help you and I to live better lives. Instruction. Well, Proverbs chapter 24, it's up on the screen. There we go. Proverbs 24, 1 through 5. Actually, we're only going to look at two verses at the moment, but, but I decided for, for, to help us a little bit to put one in before and one after. Do not envy wicked men. Do not despise their company. I know... From time to time, it would be easy for you to say other people have it better. I know at times it would be easy for you to look to people that aren't serving the Lord and say, I think they have something going for them that I don't. Here I'm trying to serve God and my life is falling apart at times. I get sick. I struggle. I go through things. Well, God says to you this morning, don't envy wicked men. Matter of fact, what you should do is be thankful or you should uh, 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 celebrate that you're in Christ this morning. There's a covenant over your life. Your problems does not move the needle with the covenant of God in your life. God is still watching over you. God is still at the center of your life. Well, here we go. Don't envy wicked men. Do not desire their company. Well, you're in good company here this morning. For their hearts plot, plot violence. Their lips talk about making trouble. There's two verses really we're going to center on. By wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. A wise man has great power, and a man of knowledge increases strength. So you say, what does this have to do with me here today? I'm glad you asked. We're talking about 
building your life. You've heard me say this once or twice. Uh, my dad wasn't one a, a, a follower, a believer of God, but wasn't one a, a church-going guy. We worked every day in the bakery trade, uh, seven days a week, long hours. But I, he did say a few things that I remember. And he, he said, you know, you make your life. Everyone makes their life. I don't know, that, that's a thought, but here's what I want to say to you today. That God wants to build your life. Now, what does that mean? By wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it is established. Did you know that God wants to build your life? What does that have to do with anything? You know, the enemy is competing for your life. The enemy, as I said in the beginning of, of this, the enemy is always trying to throw you off. The enemy is always trying to direct your steps. Allow God to build your life. You say, but I'm older now. My life's built. You say, yeah, but it's set in stone. My brother, my sister, as long as you have breath, God is still building your life. What I'm saying to you is, God's way is the right way. What I'm saying to you is, is that the path you're on is the right path. What I'm saying to you is, allow God to build your life. What kind of life do you want? Are you saying that other people have it better, or are you, are you comparing? Did you know that God's ways are still the right ways. I know at times there's competing things. It would be easy for you to get stretched or pulled the ways of the world. Try going down the path of the ways of the world and see where it takes you. It will ruin your life. You think you're smarter than God doing it God's way? My brother, my sister, this is some thoughts only to talk us into what we know is right. What I'm saying to you is allow God to build your life. He wants to build it. Uh, uh, wisdom. Understanding it is established. Oh, it's one thing to have a life, but God wants to establish you. These are some thoughts to help us as we move into this fall uh, uh, term of the calendar. You need to be established. You see, when you're planted, it has a way of lasting. When you're planted, it has a way of helping you to become. You know, I remember an illustration Pastor Joe would give about the palm tree. You know, I was in Florida for a few days, and my dad's there. It seems like every day's a, a day, and uh, been at odds with him for years, now for, for, for several years, uh, patched up in that. So I like to see him and, and, and that kind of thing. But we helped out with the hurricane, a little bit of the cleanup uh, uh, here and there. But, but the palm tree, that, you know, the palm tree don't have its surfacy, but it's, it's made to bend. You know, when the wind blows and the hurricane, if, if for some you know, reason it, it could bend quite a bit of the way. That's kind of what, what I see here. By being established, the enemy can throw everything at you, but you're still going to stand. What I'm saying, my brother, my sister, is allow God to establish your life. Allow God to be the one that directs you. Uh, then another quick thought. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled. It would be easy for us to say, but I don't have a life. I want a more enjoyable life. I want something with more contentment, so I find it in different directions. I find myself going different places. Here, here through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful. Did you know that God can fill your life? You know, you've heard uh, uh, the phrase, I remember my kids saying it, I don't 
growing up or, or something, if they were mad, they didn't get their way. I don't have a life. Listen, God can give you the life you want and need. It says here, through knowledge, its rooms are filled. Meaning, contentment, purpose. God is the one that needs to be the one that directs you and fills your life. All I'm saying, these are some thoughts to you about building our life. God wants to build your life. God wants to give you the things that you need. Why talk about something like this? Once again, because the enemy is competing for you. The enemy is trying to throw you off. The, the enemy is doing everything he can to discourage you from following God. The enemy is, is trying to talk you into... Righteous living is not appealing. That it's maybe, maybe I just ought to throw it to the wind. Many people have done it and they've regretted it. You think you have problems now? Try living your life without God. It will be that much more troubling. In this life, you're going to have trouble. But here's what I want to say to you. Keep God at the center of your life and it will work out well for you. Keep God first place and things will work out. You, you know the property, uh, the two over here, the last couple years we've been developing and working on. You know, but during the process... I'd wake up every day and say, this is a disaster. All the oil, all the problems, and this is, this is, I don't know if this is going to work. Here's what I want to say. Your life, the same way. You got to wake up every day and, and put God first, and he's going to help you to develop the life that you're looking for. All I'm saying is, is God knows what he's doing. One day you're going to look back because you stayed faithful to him. You're going to look back and say, God's ways were the right ways. You know, God's been contending with his people from the beginning. The people of God from the very beginning would always go to the left, would always go to the right. God wanted to lead them into the promise and Here's what happened. They found themselves having to go around and round. Finally, God says, this generation, i got to just forget about it. He said that a few times. He said, i got to wait to the next generation because these people just aren't getting it. They ran after other things, and they had to wait. Listen, there's a lot going for you. I'm trying to talk you into do it God's way. I'm here to, to look at a, a thought for you and I to, to say, no, don't buy into the enemy's lies. Coming to church today was a good decision you made. I'm not, this church or any, meaning, meaning when you worship God, you're setting your heart uh, uh, in the right direction. You know, when you take a shower every day, what do you do? You get cleansed or whenever you take a shower, you get cleansed. Listen, did you know that your heart needs cleansed every day? The enemy is dirtying you up. You need to have a pure heart so that you can make good decisions. You know why we make bad decisions? Many times because our heart is dirty. Many times the enemy gets the most of it and we end up doing something stupid. Some, it costs them their whole life. Some it may just be buying something foolish. We've all done that because we are darkened and walk, not walking in the, 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 the right direction. And we're pulled and we think this will satisfy us. All I'm saying is, my brother, my sister, your life is too important to throw it to the wind. How many more days are we going to waste allowing the enemy to, to, to drive us the wrong way? What I'm saying is we're going into the, uh, the fall season. I'm saying to you and I, let's 
say yes to God. What I'm saying is, let's say, okay, God, I want you to fill my life. Give me everything that you have for me. I want you, Lord, to, to be the one that builds my life. When it talks about a house, it's talking about your life. I want you, God, in your wisdom to build my life. I've always known that I haven't been the, the smartest person around. I, I quit high school, went to Bible college later, but I haven't been always the smartest cookie in the cookie jar. You've heard me say that phrase. But listen, one thing that I think that I had going for me is I always, after I, the Lord woke me up, I did have a heart for God. I had made mistakes a lot, but had a heart bent toward it. Did you know what? Wisdom, that's what keeps you on the right path. So I fear if you're one that doesn't have a, the governor that, that drives you to God. If that's you, listen, you're going to find life is going to be nothing but a storm. What I'm saying to you is, let's keep drawing close to God, and he will draw close to you. The best thing you can do if you want to make good decisions, if you want a good life, is draw close to God. You may fall. You may do some stupid things. We all do. Look at Peter. The disciples, every one of them were people that weren't the sharpest, but God used them because their hearts were bent towards him. You want to be a successful person? Have a heart that's turned towards God. That's you or you wouldn't be here. You know you lack. You know you're a person of need. You know that you want. But my brother, my sister, all of that will take a back seat if you put God first place in your life. Everything, the enemy, the enemy will flee. You will come on top. And God will mold your life and give you the life that you desire. Your life is too important to throw it to the wind. Your life is too important. Your children, the, the heritage, what God has for you is too important. So we're setting our direction this week and we're saying yes to God. When the enemy comes in and tries to get you to go a certain direction, do a certain thing, what we're going to do this week and say, no, nah, that may have worked last time, but I'm a little smarter this time, and I'm too focused on what God has for me. So I'm going to stay on this narrow road. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to brush myself off. I'm going to pick myself up, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God to forgive me. I'm going to ask God to help me. And listen, you know what God's going to do? He's going to build your life. As I, you know, just as an illustration, just like Proverbs, building a house, as I look there and at, at the different work, sometimes I marvel, did it for pennies on the dollar that normally would. What I'm getting at, I think that it was God the one to give wisdom, to, to show how. Listen, that's how it needs to be for your life. God needs to be the one to open a door for you. When the enemy tries to rob you, listen, in a moment, God can, in a blink of an eye, give you what you need. When the enemy tries to say it's all over, it's then at the 11th hour where God bails out his people. Living for God, there's nothing like it. It's the best choice you can make. It's second to nothing. My brother, my sister, build your family on the, uh, Jesus Christ and what he's did for you. My brother, my sister, build your life on him. You may fall. You may have problems. But I'm telling you, you will look back and say, it's the best choice I've ever made. And then one day, when you're in heaven and it's all over, then you were smart because you spared yourself from something that maybe others won't have the luxury. You are in heaven. What I'm saying is, praise God. 
praise God. And you got to apologize? You don't apologize for serving the Lord. You don't apologize for being a child of God. You say, hey, I may not be what I want to be completely, but I'm glad that he brought me a little farther and I'm moving towards Christ Jesus. My brother, my sister, I, listen, you're, you're in the right shoes, meaning God's with you. God's working in your life. It's going to work out. You got to hold on sometimes. You got to trust in the Lord sometimes. You got to say, yes, Lord, sometimes. Let's say, yes, Lord, this week. Let's say, yes, Lord, this week. You say, okay, yes, Lord. No, 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 not, I'm not going to go there. Yes, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Listen, a person that does that is a person, knowledge. Oh, think of that in yourself. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Understanding? Understanding is deep, deep. Back when I used to uh, prepare sermons a little better than I, I did, sometimes I would sit for four or five hours just to thinking about a verse, understanding, deep thinking. Now I don't take as much time doing some work. Hopefully I could get back to some of that. But listen, understanding. If you have understanding, the winds will blow, everything will come against you, and you'll still stand. Because there's roots. There's something that's built. It's bigger than what the world has to offer. Knowledge? Here's what this says, and I am done. A wise man has great power. You want to be a great person? Some of us in this, you know, so there's, some of us are competitive, and we want God to do some good things in our life. All right, that's all right. Solomon was a great person, but you know how you get it? A wise man has great power. You try to do it another way of that, you're going to fall on your face. You try to get, you know, you tried to be great in the ways of, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. You know how you become a great person? Following Christ Jesus. Listen, and I am done. My life, I was an ex drug addict or this or really not that. You know, I, I turned it around. All I'm saying is, you know what made me great? And I'm not saying I'm so great. I'm just trying to put it there. You know what? It's Jesus in me alone. That's the facts. I'm telling you, you're on the right path, and you better, you better build on it, and, and God's going to take you places that you never dreamed were possible. Are you with me? Amen. Lord Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. Hey, this is our confession time. This is our time where we say yes to God. Feel free to repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I need you. I love you. I thank you for my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, Father, bless your people. Some, some this week need a miracle. Some need you to open a door. God, some need your mercy, your grace. May it be all of these things for thy people, I pray. May you bestow grace, mercy on them this week. May the healing power of Jesus come on them, we pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Let's stand for the benediction. Feel free to lift your hands. Feel free to lift your hands. Feel free to lift your hands. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you 
and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God be with you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.